Hi, everybody. My name is Tanisha. Um, this video was originally was supposed to be an interview with me and ABB. Hey, Bo. But we actually did the interview, but it didn't record. So I have I'm making a video just to share my story. Um, this will be the first of many videos because of the topic is um it's pretty complex and i've gained a lot of knowledge and information in a lot of different ways and it should be um broken down so people could understand um this video is about a certain energy it's the energy that um I believe it anchors us and it, <clears throat> it definitely anchors us and it's the energy that we all have to deal with or go through at one time or another in our life whether we are aware of it or not um, this video is to bring awareness and shine light on a lot of dark things um, this video is also part of my healing and it's also for um, those of us that's going through this or somebody that's going through this and they don't understand and they need um, some type of help or understanding so that's what I'm about to bring or at least share my story and my truth um I first be, first became aware of this energy back in 2017. Um, in my memory prior, when it came to being sexually molested, I only have memories of one certain family member and <clears throat> when i got my shamanic journey i knew specifically that my inner child was calling to me so that's what i asked her to do i let her know about the um family member and things like that so her whole purpose of the shamanic journey was to go and find my inner child and find out and find out what what I needed to do in order to heal her. <clears throat> that shamanic journey brought awareness to a lot of things that I did not know or things that I forgot. And one of those things were um the energy or what happens to us when we get uh, sexually molested what happens is the energy that's on them gets stuck on us and that energy will be there until we find out the information to rid ourselves of it I want to I want to say that um, prior to that shamanic journey, I had no, I had no idea that um, not only was I sexually abused by more than one person, but several people knew about it, and they didn't do anything to help me. Um, after I will also post my shamanic journey and also my son's shamanic journey so everybody can really <clears throat> really look at read it and get an understanding of it um, I, I believe it was a couple of months after my shamanic journey I found out that 
my son and his sister was being molested by my son's father. I want to really draw attention to the fact that I never even had thoughts to even look at him in that way until I started to heal myself from that energy. <clears throat> I'll get deeper into that a little bit later. Um, the moment I found out it was very traumatic and I, went, I blasted him on Facebook, but it wasn't, it really wasn't in a, in a negative way, but people took it that way. I actually, I was really, I was having panic attacks. I was having panic attacks because the moment that I decided to look at him in that way, because <clears throat> the moment where yeah, I was having panic attacks because I couldn't believe that it had went on so long without me knowing. Um, at the time, my son was five, his sister was seven, and they pretty much lived with me. The whole time she's been alive, me and him, we got together when she was three months old. And even though we would break up and get back together, break up and get back together, for the most part, they lived with me, even when we wasn't in a relationship. Um, the moment I put that shit on Facebook is the moment that shit just got extremely weird because not only was I talking about something so fucked up, um, everybody knew and no one, well, it's only one person. No one, um, I don't want to say cared, but yeah, they didn't care. Um, for a couple of months, um, yeah, well, I called the system, did 696 kids, that whole nine. I will make a totally separate video about that because um, that's probably one of the biggest problems that we have is going to the system for help and they don't help us. It's done on purpose. So I'll break that down in another video. But if you like me and you told and nothing was done, that's done on purpose. Don't think you're crazy. Don't think, um, you know, oh, this, it can't be like that. It is like that. I've been through it three times. I'm still going through it to a certain degree. Um, if it's anybody out there who, who wants to help me fight for my son in custody, um, search me on Facebook and send me a Facebook message. My name is Tanisha Mitchell. Uh, yeah, but the system, all that is in cahoots, but we should, we already know that from the Catholic Church, from the, um, children trafficking and all that stuff. We see it, they in on it, the government, they all know. Oh, I'll get into that later. Now, <clears throat> when I found out about my son's father and I started to put the pieces together, and everything, my son gave me confirmation. I remember the first thing he said to me, uh, and he said, mommy, I didn't know that it was evil. 
<clears throat> and I said, I know, babe, that's why I'm not mad at you. At that point, I had, I didn't know that my son had been touched by so many people. My son thought it was normal. Like many kids do. It was just something that him and mommy didn't do. So, a lot of this shit came from family members and people that I trust. Um, I got an ugly cry and I ain't trying. Also around that time, <clears throat> I found out about, I found out some information about other family members. And it, it fucked me up, period. Um, it was a lot of family secrets that I did not know. When I found out, it fucked me up. <clears throat> um... During that time, when I found out about my son's father, yeah, I also found out about family members, and I started to realize that it was a pattern or cycles within my family. <clears throat> also, my um, my son's father family, from what I can see, uh, with his family, I can't <clears throat> speak too much on because it's so much that he didn't tell me and that I don't know. So I can't really speak on it. But uh, from my side of the family, um, what ends up happening is the women of the family end up being sexually abused by the men of the family. Everyone knows But it's not much that they do about it. And the man of the family, they just, they're able to do it. Us women, we pretty much, we just have to take it. Me understanding that cycle. I was able to break it because the women of the family, even if they do tell, <clears throat> the parent don't do nothing about it as far as um, making either one of the kids go to counseling, get them any type of help. No, nobody do nothing. They just turn the other cheek or look the other way, sweep it under the rug or point fingers and blame. Before I go any further, I want people to understand that this is an energy that we're dealing with. It's not a person. It's an energy that has the ability to influence and control you. It's a lot of different ways that that energy can control you. For instance, um, me, <clears throat> I believe that that energy was able to keep me from seeing the truth about my son's father. Because it's many times that I almost noticed or, you know, they almost slipped up or I became very close or, you know. That energy 
it keeps people from telling. It keeps people from doing stuff. And it keeps people from changing. The main reason I believe that no one talks about it or speaks up about it is because it's shameful and it's a lot of guilt. First of all, shame and guilt is something that's taught to us. It's something that comes with a belief or a thought that something was supposed to be a certain type of way, when in fact, nothing is supposed to be a certain type of way. We're all, we're all human, and we're all meant to come here and learn. If you leave things at that perspective, it's no need for guilt and shame. We all fuck up. We all make mistakes. That doesn't mean that we can't fix them. But because people come, become so shameful and guilty, they don't have the strength to fix Face it and fight it. <clears throat> when I found out about my son's father, I never set my son down and tried to make him tell me anything. He will randomly come up to me and tell me things. One thing in particular he said something to me that it really fucked me up. <laughs> because the shit that these kids have to go through, these fucking monsters is pretty fucking extreme. We can see now. Look at a lot of adults in this world. And you ask yourself, what the fuck happened? It may not all just be sexual abuse, but the most fucked up people on this planet suffered the worst as children. I remember my son saying, Mommy, parents can do whatever they want to their kids. <laughs> My response is, who the fuck told you that? <laughs> because it's not true. <laughs> People don't understand this. <laughs> Just because you birth someone or you raise and you take care of someone, it doesn't give you the right to violate them. That's something I had to tell my son. Just because I'm your parent, that doesn't give me the right to just do anything to you. Another thing he said, I really want to bring attention to, is he said that... Um, uh, trying to think of the right wording that he said. He said, uh, Mommy, some kids, he said along the lines of it being a form of punishment. There's some kids out here that go through so much. <laughs> and sometimes we don't even see it or realize it. I'll do another, I'll be doing several videos. I don't wanna get too um, stuck on one subject. This is kinda just like a, a overall of the energy and, Within itself. Um, I 
the hardest part in this fight is we fight in something that we can't see and we fight in something that has the ability to um, control others. And I notice if you bring attention to it or say anything about it, it'll try to destroy you in a lot of different ways. Um, I remember when me and ABB got done with the interview. And I start to feel other people's pain. So I'm not, I'm not the only one that's going through this. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. And it also gave me confirmation that it's something that I need to do. Um, I've been through every stage, every emotional stage possible with this energy. I've been mad, sad, upset, depressed. Um, understanding and now I'm at the point where I just have this compassion <laughs> for the people that do it because Regardless of how you look at it, we all are word victims at one point or another. And the only way, please understand me when I say this, the only way we can fight this energy or destroy this energy is to rise above it. I know it's hard, it took me years to get here, but it's extremely necessary. We can't we can't destroy something on the same level it was built upon. And that energy is filled with every low vibrational energy that you could possibly think of. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, y'all. I kind of wish I did make my notes now. <laughs> because I'm kind of straddling. Trying to figure out what next to, to think about. Right now, honestly, probably until my last day on this earth, I'll be fighting this energy. Trying to rid this, this energy from my bloodline. <clears throat> um, part of our son's healing um, is with his grandparents, grandmothers, grandmothers in specifically. And it's hard for me to heal my son because um, I need my mom. But that energy that energy stops it. I'll talk 
more about it later. Or uh, if anybody have any questions or a topic in particular, in particular that they want to talk about, please leave it.